If there's one type of game from the 16-bit era I couldn't wait to see on the N64, it was 2D space shooters. Aside from racing games, they are one of my favourite game genres to play and the thought of seeing a 2D space shooter with 3D graphics was something I was really looking forward to. Sadly, while many relics from the 16-bit era made great transitions to the N64, the 2D space shooter genre seemed to die and this left us with Star Soldier Vanishing Earth as the N64's only real contender. The game was developed by Hudson Soft and published by Electrobrain in Japan and North America in 1998, but it never made a European release. Speaking of the game's release in North America, there was little promotion by Electrobrain, which meant that the game stores didn't even know their game was released, which resulted in the game selling poorly, as there was little to no hype before the game's release, and it took weeks for gamers to realise it was actually available and had been released. After its rocky start, you'd hope that Star Soldier Vanishing Earth would be a great gaming experience, but sadly, I have mixed opinions on the game and ultimately find it difficult to make a solid opinion. Firstly, as you'll most likely know, this is part of the Star Soldier series, which is fondly remembered on the NES, and even some of the veteran developers from the original title worked on this game. With that calibre of talent, you'd be fooled into thinking this would be a major step forward in the series, and you would be disappointed, so here's why. The game itself has replaced sprites with polygons, which gives the game a nice graphical style. As you can see in the footage, the range of enemies is diverse, and learning how to attack each of them is great fun. Like most space shooters, you will need to learn attack patterns and enemy weaknesses in order to survive, and Star Soldier does a great job of this. There are three spacecraft to choose from in your quest to defeat the Zeograd army, and each has their strengths and weaknesses. I'd recommend playing around at first to see which craft suits your playstyle the best, and you'll quickly decide which one suits your playing style. The ships have different weapons and upgrades available for them, so having the right craft is key, and thankfully the controls are very tight and responsive, so you can't blame any cheap deaths on that. There are seven stages in total, and one of the main problems I have with the game are just how short they are. Each level takes place in a different environment, and actually I think they look great. One level you'll be flying over oceans, and the next you'll be attacking huge enemy spacecraft. At the end of each level you'll face a boss, and these are some of the coolest bosses on the N64. They are huge in scale, require tactics to defeat, and are packed with explosions. Dropping bombs on these bosses can make them quite easy to defeat, however if you fire a few in a row, you can defeat some of the bosses in less than 30 seconds, which is frankly quite disappointing. There are some nice graphical touches in the game such as moving scenery and changing paths and when you get towards the end of the game it will even tell you where some of the secret routes are during the previous levels. So it does add a little bit of replayability making you want to go back and see what the secret paths have on offer. I'd like to point out that you should definitely avoid the beginner difficulty level. Playing on this difficulty mode takes the game way too easy and if you have it on this difficulty you can complete the game in around 30 minutes without using any continues. Sadly, there is no two-player mode in the game, however a cool feature is the time-based attacks where you can choose from a two or five minute games and the aim is to rack up the biggest score possible. The levels you play are the same in the main game, so these modes are really just for those of you that are wanting or are interested in high score attacking. The sound in the game is also average at best. The music isn't bad, but it's by no means memorable. After playing the game, you won't remember much of the music either in a good or bad way but at least it didn't detract you from the on-screen action which at times can be very fierce. The sound effects are also bog standard and personally I'd have preferred a little more variation. As a fan of 2D space shooters, I still like this game. It was a blast from the past and being the only real 2D shooter on the N64 may be why I liked it as much as I did as there really aren't many alternatives. With that being said, the game is heavily lapped down by its lack of innovation and overall polish and it's outclassed by so many Super Nintendo shooters that unless you are a curious person about the game, I don't think it will be as memorable as you will be hoping. Stores were selling it for as little as $15 on its release, which is an incredible price when you think there were still N64 games selling for four times as much. Due to the game's poor sales, I expect that the price may start rising quite soon, so now would probably be a good time to add this to your collection. Anyway, I'd love to know what you thought about this game, as to be honest, I can't seem to make my mind upon it. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and thanks to Jam Dizzy Dizzy for suggesting this review in the comments section of my last video. Until next time, take care.